on the 2nd of January, I was flying to Korea. And when I was in Atlanta airport that night, I became aware of something that happened in a Buffalo Bills football game. Bills, Bills Bengals, Bills Bengals. And if you, unless you've been living under a rock, <laughs> you would know that a, a football player made a, made a normal football move, got up and collapsed with a massive cardiac arrest, basically died on the field. They worked on him and had to resuscitate him twice in a nine minute period of time. His name is Damar Hamlin. And there was prayer all over the field, which is not unusual when you see an, a player get injured, but there was something different about this game because they basically watched this young man die, 24 years old. And yeah, tw 24 years old. And so they were so upset by it when they carted him off the field, nobody really thought he would live. And so they canceled the game. You know it's something if they're going to cancel a football game. Both sides just said, we don't want to play. So they didn't pray, play, but they prayed. And something sparked, number one, DeMar Hamlin lived and didn't die. But something else sparked during that week that I think shows how God can take a trial or a tragedy and turn it into a triumph. Um, I have a couple little clips that I'm, I'm going to play for you. But Winona, if you'll just pull up that first one. It's just on my heart that I want to pray for It you. is. This is a Come sportscaster. Right, right now. Um, I'm going to do it out loud. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to bow my head, and I'm just going to pray for him. Um, this is NFL Live. God, we come to you in these moments that we don't understand, that are hard, uh, because we believe that your God and coming to you and praying to you um, has impact. We're, we're sad. We're angry. Um, and we want answers, but some things are unanswerable. We just want to pray, truly come to you and pray for strength for Damar, for healing for Damar. It's for on national television. DeMar, to be with his family, to give them peace. If we didn't believe that prayer didn't work, we wouldn't ask this of you, God. Um, I believe in prayer. We believe in prayer. We lift up Damar Hamlin's name in your name. Amen. 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 But I want to, it's just, on, but I want to, it's just on my heart that he, I want to. And now we are seeing both teams. Here's, here's what happened the next week. Coming out to the field, both number threes. Both number threes. DeMar Hamlin's number is number three. Third day church. The year of the Holy Spirit. A show of solidarity. And everybody's wearing number three all over the, the league. The whole NFL as a community came together this week. Both teams. Coming together. All over the nation, no this took how place. Our world has become, no matter our race, creed, or our religion, that we can come together in prayer. So when you see that he's breathing on his own and he's able to call into a team meeting and tell his teammates that he loves them, that was the lift me up that all NFL players needed and that really all of us were praying for would happen. So now you're going to see every single team go out there the next two days and they're going to play for DeMar Hamlin. And I think it has to be said that there is power in prayer and also we have to acknowledge the first responders and the medical professionals who saved DeMar Hamlin's life on that football field. We're all pulling for you and we're all pulling for the Bills in spirit right now. Hopefully he can continue to get better and better. I just hope he can feel the love. And the Everybody's love wearing a number three. So we're not going to stand behind the final statement of Go Bills, but um, <laughs> Josh Allen, who is the quarterback, why am I focusing in on this? Because we saw a resurrection life. As soon as we prayed about it, we were on the phone and it was like, you know, Lord, it would be awesome to watch you raise this young man up as a response to prayer. Nobody thought he was going to live and yet he's alive today 
and, and giving glory to God, the quarterback of the, the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, he delivered an emotional statement and he gave all the glory to God. He said, listen, I'm, I, I was raised in a Methodist church. I've not been the best of Christians. He said, but what has happened to me has been a spiritual awakening. He said, I was going around to my team saying, God is real. God is real. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. God is real. Come on, God is real. And just as a nice little exclamation point, the week following the game that they canceled, they were going out on the field and they were playing who? Does anybody know? The Bills were playing somebody. Anyway, they went out on the field and on the opening kickoff, the Bill they had dedicated the game to DeMar Hamlin. On the opening kickoff, the punt returner ran the kickoff return. It was the, the opening kickoff of the game. He ran 94 yards and ran the kickoff back for a touchdown. The last time that happened on the Buffalo Bills team was three years and three months ago. I'm just saying, guys, God is trying to get our attention. I think there's a third day church that's rising up. I think there's a Holy Ghost revolution that's coming to the, to the earth. I believe that in this season of time, God is saying you're living in the third day. I know we're talking about the third year, but we're talking about the third day. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of this right now, but I just want you to see some of these things that are prefaced by the phrase on the third day. On the third day, Abraham arrived at Mount Moriah, went up and sat, went to sacrifice Isaac according to what God had told him to do and God provided a ram in the thicket as a, a picture of salvation that God would provide a sacrificial lamb that would pay for our sins. Come on, that was the test of his life but I believe it's a time of testing but also prom promotion and it was from that place that God revealed himself as Jehovah Jireh. The Lord our provider. Amen. It said it was on the third day when Moses was on Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 19. It was on the third day that the voice of the Lord began to be released with thunderings and lightnings and, and the sound of a trumpet. And God came down and met with Moses on the third day and gave him the Ten Commandment, Commandments. Come on, this is the time that God wants to meet with us. This is a time of meeting with God, a time to hear the voice of God. It was on the third day that Joshua told the children of Israel, he said, listen, I've heard from God, and God says, prepare yourself for the third day. Prepare yourself for the third day, because on the third day from now, we're going to cross in, and we're going to possess our promised land. I'm telling you, this is going to be a year where we're going to possess the promises that God has given to us. Come on, they had waited 430 years in Egyptian captivity, plus an additional 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. But the day finally came where God said, now is the time you're going to cross in and you're going to possess your promised land. How many have some promises that you believe that God still has on the agenda for your life? That you have some promises, some things that God has spoken to you about your family, about your finances, about your ministry, your destiny. And God is saying, this is going to be a year to cross over and step in to that place of promise. By the way, on the third day in the promised land, manna ceased. Transition. But also, on one hand, it's kind of like, well, that's how God's provided for us all this time. But now... Instead of manna, we get to eat of the milk and honey of our promise. 